I came up with this recipe because I love blondies. I don't think blondies get their due, really. Brownies sort of overshadow blondies all the time, but chocolate is to brownie as caramel is to blondie, I feel, and apple cider really goes so well with that caramel that I just thought it was a perfect seasonal treat, and it fits perfectly into the pan. Hi, I'm Rhoda from Made In, and I'm here at Milk Bar in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, with Hilly from Milk Bar. We are working with the Milk Bar by Made In 8x8 baking dish today. And Hilly, what are we making? We're going to be making apple cider caramel blondies, and it's a really great seasonal recipe. There's no you know, cocoa powder, no dark chocolate in it. It's really about focusing in on those caramel flavors. So it's the same gooey texture of a brownie, but focusing on caramel instead of chocolate. First, we're gonna start by making our caramel. We're gonna reduce this apple cider down. We're gonna cook off all the water in it until it reaches this like really thick, syrupy consistency. Um, so we're gonna keep all the apple flavor, but none of the water. We are gonna let this go for 30 to 40 minutes. We're looking for it to reduce till it's thick and syrupy. We're gonna stir it occasionally just so none of that sediment burns on the bottom. All right, so our cider's reduced way, way down. So when I draw a line on the bottom, it leaves that mark down the middle and takes a while to fill in. That's how you'll know it's ready. Can I help you? Of course. What Feel should I start with? Start with the sugar. Okay, so this is light brown sugar and granulated sugar. Give it a stir. I'm gonna add that butter in there next. Do the corn syrup. And why are we adding corn syrup? The corn syrup helps prevent crystallization in the caramel, so it kind of helps foolproof it a little bit. So if you take it a little too far, you won't end up with a hard caramel. Ready for the cream? Ready for the cream. So we're just waiting for it to come back to a boil, and then we're gonna let it go for five or so minutes until it reaches soft ball stage, which basically just means it's gonna be the right texture for chewing, and it's not gonna end up hard, like a hard slab of caramel, basically. So what temperature are you trying to get? We wanna hit it right at 252, stop the cooking so we get that perfect chewy texture. All Baking right. really is such a science. I know. All right, so we have got our caramel at 252. Um, it smells so good. It smells amazing. I like to add all the spices and salts and extracts at the end. The heat sort of blooms the spices nicely without burning them. And then same with our vanilla and apple cider vinegar. If we were to add them at the beginning, we're sort of cooking them off throughout the cooking process of the caramel. So adding them now like preserves that flavor a little bit. So we've got cinnamon. I'll just stir as you add. That cardamom. 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 Mm. What does the cardamom add? If I could spice everything with just cardamom, I probably would. So it's not necessarily a traditional spice in like an apple pie. A traditional apple pie might have um, mostly cinnamon with some ginger, maybe some nutmeg. I don't hate nutmeg, but I don't love nutmeg. I don't know what nutmeg is like really bringing to the table. So cardamom brings this like really warm undertone that I love. Nutmeg is overrated? I think nutmeg's a little overrated. I think it's overrated. Oh my god. Sorry, hot take alert, but I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't need it. What's next? Allspice. And the last one is? Ginger. Great. If you don't have all these spices, you could use apple pie spice also, yeah, same so amount. They sell um, pre-mixed apple pie spice at the grocery store. You can just substitute with, I think it's four teaspoons of spice. This looks really good. It smells amazing. It smells amazing. And then we've got salt apple cider vinegar and vanilla extract to finish it off. Okay. All right, now we've got our gorgeous caramel. It's sort of this amazing dark spicy color. You can just see all the spices in there. This recipe makes double what you would actually use in the blondies, so I'm just gonna pour off a cup of it to save to put on top of our blondies and then save the rest for candies. So we can set that aside to set, and now we just have to make our blondie base. I've got the oven at 325, so we can just roll right into that. Batter time. Batter time. Batter's it's up. batter time. Batter's up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you ruined my joke. No, the batter's up. All right, so onto the blondie batter. Order of operations, basically, we're going to start melting our butter and white chocolate, so we have that ready to go. I thought you said there wasn't any chocolate in blondies. Well, this is sort of 
secret ingredient vibes because yes. it's sort of to help mimic that texture you get of a fudgy chocolatey brownie without actually introducing chocolate flavor, basically. So it, you kind of sneak in the white chocolate. You don't think about the white chocolate. It's not a white chocolate blondie, but it's really? there to make sure it stays, <laughs> stays nice and fudgy in the center. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm into it. I think I'll start by warming the butter and then add the white chocolate. Okay. I'm just gonna set this over medium low heat. We're just trying to melt it, not cook it. Okay, dry ingredients. Dry ingredients, so we've got flour, cinnamon, baking powder, and salt, and then another special ingredient, milk powder. Um, it's an ingredient we use a lot at Milk Bar, it's basically just dehydrated milk, um, and it helps keep the chew in the blondie, because um, you don't want to end up with something too cakey. Um, you really want to keep that chew. So the white chocolate and the milk powder are sort of working in tandem to make sure you end up with a really fudgy, chewy blondie. Okay, so cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah, so this is that double spice thing we're talking about. Baking powder. Baking powder. A little um, leavening. Just a little leavening. There's some debate in the internet blondie community, it seems, during my research, that some people don't like to add baking powder to their blondies. They think all the leavening should come from the eggs. Um, but I find every time I did it with just the eggs, I end up with basically a cake. So I think the baking powder and a little bit of leavening from the eggs really helps weigh out everything. Hilly, how many times did you test this recipe? I, I, you know, I've been eating blondies for a while now. I'll just like say that. <laughs> okay, so kosher salt again. Kosher salt again. Right. Always need it. Got to have salt in your desserts. We can whisk that together. Okay. Always mix your dry ingredients. Is that mixed enough? Beautiful. Perfect. So to our largest bowl, we can add light brown sugar, just right to the bottom. That's a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. It's about two cups of sugar. And while this is happening, I've just added the white chocolate to the butter back there to start melting together. What's next? Eggs, you can crack them both right in there. And vanilla can go in too. Um, so we've got a balloon whisk for this one versus just our standard whisk here. This one's a little tougher, a little harder to mix. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to incorporate a little bit of air into this. Okay. Um, so a bigger balloon style whisk is just gonna make that easier. Okay. Stand back. <laughs> so you're basically just looking to dissolve all that sugar into the eggs. You can see it's lightening in color, so we want to keep whisking until it's like two shades or so lighter <laughs> from before. And you can really like crank it and just go for it. I'm cranking it. <laughs> I'm, cranking. I'm cracking it. We're at full speed. Beautiful. Perfect. Done? Done. <laughs> Um, so now butter and white chocolate. Okay. We're not trying to cook it, it's just lightly warmed. So we're just gonna add it a little bit at a time. I'll have you whisk and I'll keep adding. By slowly incorporating it, we're keeping that batter nice and shiny. It's not broken, there's no issues. It looks perfect. Okay. Switch to a spatula. Okay. We can add the dries. You can get a little thick for the whisk, so the spatula's a little easier. You can dump them in all at once. Okay. Would you ever do this in a stand mixer, using a hand mixer? You can definitely do it in a stand mixer or a hand mixer, um, but basically you just set it to low for most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I find it's, it's pretty easy by hand, so yeah. like you're doing right there, perfect technique, going around the side of the bowl Excellent. and folding things in. Um, that is one like risk with the stand mixer, is if you mm. forget about it for too long when you're adding the dry ingredients and you're not actively mixing it yourself, you can overmix it and develop a little too much gluten into that mix. Gotcha. If you over mix it, it ends up a little too dense and the edges get really, really hard. Almost ends up like bready in the center. Okay, right. ready? Does this look good? This looks perfect. All right, so what are we using? We are baking these in the Milk Bar by Maiden 8x8 porcelain baking dish. This is kind of the perfect thing, I think, for every, to have in every baker's arsenal. It's the perfect size, I think. 9 by 13 gets all, all the attention, but the 8 by 8 I think is perfect, especially for me in New York City. I have to think very thoughtfully about what pieces of equipment I bring into my very, very small kitchen. So this is the perfect size, it's super versatile, and it's perfect for blondies. It's nice to bake using porcelain because it, it bakes so evenly. Um, it retains heat really, really well, and it can go from hot to cold very well. It's super versatile, so you can use it for just about anything. You can use it to portion those caramel candies over there. You can use it to bake in. You can use it to roast in. And another thing I love is it's very easy to clean. Very easy to clean. That's a huge yes. thing. Yes. Um, no, so we didn't grease this. Yeah, yeah exactly. We didn't grease this pan. We are just, we're going in. We're going in. And because it's porcelain, you end up with a nice clean dish at the end. Beautiful. Batter is in. Batter, batter up. Batter in. Batter in. 
So now, moment of truth with the caramel. Okay, I want Pretty to see exciting. your technique. So what, what's the game plan? Game plan is have fun. Okay. The game plan is be as creative as you wish. Um, but the goal is here to just drizzle over the caramel. It looks a little, it can look a little messy in this moment, but that's like, it's sort of the point. It's supposed to be um, an expression of what you want to do. Um, but basically, since we've just let this caramel out at room temperature for a little bit, it's set up a little bit, but it's still at a pourable consistency. So you can either dollop little bits all over it or just start pouring. I like to just start pouring and then we'll do some swirls with the spoon. Have a, a Pollock effect. Yeah, exactly. So I'm kind of avoiding the edges a little bit. That would be my sort of one note when drizzling this. Um, if you bring it all the way to the edges, the caramel can sort of take on a little too much color in the oven and sort of crisp up on the sides. So now we've got this drizzled on using the same spoon. I just like to work some of the dough back up, right? So you, if you're not covering the entire surface with them. So I'm just scooping and folding. So the goal here is to end up with like nice little pools and, and crevasses of caramel in your blondies. Mm -hmm. And by incorporating a little bit into the dough, we're gonna achieve that hopefully. It looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. And now all that's left to do is bake it. So 325 okay. for 40 to 50 minutes. You're basically looking for it to rise up and puff up in the center and then settle back down after that. Dare I say this came out perfect. It's got I just agree. the texture we want. You see those like pools and rivers of caramel in there. So in each slice, the idea is to get like a big piece of caramel in there too. So you can see it's sort of pooled in certain spots, but part of it has incorporated into the batter. And now it's just time to try it. And this should come right out by itself. And you're trying to get to the middle. I'm trying to get to the middle. So you're going to get that, and then I'm going to go right there. Okay. Right. So there we got one right there. Thank you. You can see the caramel's just pooled down there. It's not too cakey. It's nice and dense and gooey in the center still. Looks That's so what we're good. looking for. So see, look at that. See? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Look at my edge. Yes. <laughs> see? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. See, you can see that caramel just like pooled right in the center, and it's gorgeous. All right. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. I mean, I mean, come on. Mm. But you really it feels get like that apple pie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that caramel really. It doesn't seem like that much. It's just apple cider, but treating it this way, it just it tastes like a fresh apple. This is so good. Oh my god! Thank I'm glad you you're enjoying me it. How to make it? Of course. Um, there's a bonus. Why don't we slice up the extra caramel? for a little apple cider caramel candies. Yes. Yes, perfect. So we've got some caramel that I made earlier that's set to room temperature. I'm actually gonna throw on some flaky salt on top. We're gonna grease our knife, because it's caramel, it's very sticky. Now we've got this extra little treat. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Got that salt on top. It's a nice texture. Yeah. Hilly, thank you so much for having us here today at Milk Bar and showing us the most amazing apple cider caramel blondie recipe that I've ever had. Thank you. Using this Milk Bar yeah. by Maiden amazing uh, baking dish. I hope that you give it a try. Yes. Thanks for having us. Can we come back? Anytime, anytime. Thanks. Only if you do the mixing. You got it. <laughs> <laughs>